That is healthy sites looking at fuel cells. Science understandings we're going to look at fuel cells, including flow cells or galvanic cells, in which the electrode reactants are available in continuous supply. So, advantages and disadvantages of fuel cells compared to other galvanic cells identify anode and cathode and their charges, as well as direction of ion and electron flow. Write half equations for a fuel cell given sufficient information, and flow cells have the advantage over other fuel cells of being rechargeable. So, how does a fuel cell work? Well, a fuel cell is a galvanic cell. Um, just like a regular battery, we're providing the fuel and the oxygen in a constant supply. You can use fuels such as hydrogen or methanol, and they're being oxidized at nanos. So if we have a look at our fuel cell here, this is a PEM fuel cell. Hydrogen is being uh, pumped in, um, it's reacting at the anode, and there's oxidation occurring there. On right, the other side, you have an oxidant, in this case, we're using oxygen from the air. Um, that oxygen is being reduced at the cathode. So the oxidation electron generates electrons and they pass through an external circuit, and that's where we have our load, so we might be powering a house or something. And then the electrons pass back to the cathode, and you get reduction occurring. Um, in this case, the product of the reduction is water, so hydrogen ions are flowing through an electrolyte over here too. The anode and cathode are separated by an electrolyte, and that could be solid or it could be liquid. Um, in this case, we've got hydrogen ions passing through from the anode to the cathode, and that generates water at the cathode, so, uh, so the oxygen produces water and that water is the waste product. The electrolyte completes the circuit because we have electron flow on the external circuit and then we have an ion flow on the internal circuit. So let's have a look at this fuel cell. So here we can see the hydrogen coming in. Um, we have a catalyst on the anode and that causes the hydrogen to break up. So the catalyst is here. Um, the catalyst causes the hydrogen to break up, in this case, into hydrogen ions. Those are the hydrogen ions that are passing through, so they protons. Um, when the hydrogen breaks up into hydrogen ions, we get electrons being generated. They pass through the external circuit. So on the cathode side, we have oxygen coming in. That passes to the catalyst on the cathode side. And in this case, the oxygen is reacting with the hydrogen ions that are passing through the electrolyte to produce water. We have our electrolytes in the middle. And in this case, it's a proton exchange membrane that's uh, doing this. You can have a variety of electrolytes, and it depends on what type of fuel cell you have running. Um, hydrogen that isn't used can be recycled, so that can pass back through. Um, the water that is produced, um, that can just be emitted. So, given some information, you need to decide 3, 2, 1. So, given some information, you need to be able to um, label a fuel cell, basically tell me where the fuel cell parts are. So, if we look at our fuel cell here, we can see our direction of electron flow in this case. Our electrons are passing through the external circuit in a clockwise manner. Um, and that tells us something. Now, electrons are generated at an anode, so in this case, number 7 here, that's going to be our anode. And this is the same, uh, anode, spell it correctly, this is the same as a regular galvanic cell. So the anode is the site of oxidation, oxidation is loss of electrons, so electrons are being produced. The other thing we know is the charge of the anode. Again, same as any other galvanic cell, the anode has a negative charge. So that means over here we have our cathode. Okay, and the cathode has to have the opposite charge. Now, what's passing in here is, is going to be oxygen, so oxygen gas. Here we have hydrogen gas passing in, and our waste is water vapor, and that's passing out over here. Last part here is the ion direction. The ion direction will depend on which type of fuel cell you're looking at. In this case, we have got hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ions will pass uh, towards the anode so they can unite with hydrogen ions over here to produce water. So over here we can see the waste as water, so the hydroxide ions have to go in this direction. In different fuel cells you might have hydrogen ions passing over to the oxygen side, so the cathode side, and you'll have the waste water coming out this side. If that's the case, then the ion direction is a bit different, so you need to look at the context for the question there. So let's have a look at the equations. So in this case we've got hydrogen being oxidized, so hydrogen gas. Hydrogen uh, is going to go to hydrogen ions. We have two of those, and to balance out charge, we have two electrons being generated. On the other side, we have oxygen producing water. So we'll go O2 goes to H2O. Now we need to balance this out. Uh, we've got two oxygens on this side, so we need two, um, ox two waters on this side. And we're adding four hydrogen ions to this side, and we're also going to add uh, four electrons. That means we're going to need to double this side to get our overall equation. So we're going to get 2H2 
plus O2 plus four electrons plus four uh, hydrogen ions uh, goes to, we've got uh, four hydrogen ions again, plus four electrons plus uh, two water molecules. We do our cancelling out, the hydrogen ions and the electrons cancel out. So we're left with 2H2 plus O2 goes to 2H2O, which is the same as if you were burning the hydrogen gas in oxygen anyway. So we're kind of doing a combustion, but we're not really combusting because we're not burning. We're stripping the electrons off, we're getting the same reaction occurring, but we're not generating heat, and that leads to its increased efficiency. So here we have a video showing how a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell works. So this is thanks to Reese Lewis. Um, so there fuel cells are stacked together. You don't just have a single large cell. You have lots of small cells that are stacked together. We have hydrogen flowing in one direction, you have oxygen flowing in the other direction, um, and they're flowing through in different layers. And you have your membrane, that's where your electrolyte is present. Okay, so if we look what's happening here, so we've got our hydrogen being oxidized, produce hydrogen ions and the electrons. In this case, the hydrogen ions are passing through the electrolyte, um, uniting with an oxygen and producing water, and then that's our waste product. Now we've looked at hydrogen oxygen fuel cells, let's have a look at a methanol fuel cell. So we've got our fuel cell here. Let's figure out what our equations are going to be. So we're going to start with methanol, so CH3OH. If we look up here, we're producing carbon dioxide, CO2. So we've got one carbon, one carbon. We've got four, uh, one oxygen here. We've got two oxygens over here. So we need to add another water, so H2O. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens on this side, so we're going to need six hydrogen ions on this side. If we've got six hydrogen ions on this side, we're going to have six electrons on this side as well. Um, on the other side, we've got oxygen producing water. So O2 goes to H2O, uh, which is very similar to what we had before. So uh, oxygen plus water, we're going to need two of those. We're going to get uh, plus four hydrogen ions and four electrons. Uh, so we're multiplying the top by two and the bottom one by three. So we get two waters plus two methanols uh, plus three oxygens plus 12 hydrogens plus 12 electrons goes to two carbon dioxides plus 12 hydrogens plus uh, 12 electrons plus six H2O, six waters. So we can cancel out the hydrogens and electrons. Uh, we've got six waters on this side, but uh, two waters on this side, so we cancel out those, and that gives us four. And I think everything else is there. So I'm going to rewrite the full equation up here. So we get two CH3OH, so two methanols, plus three oxygens goes to uh, two carbon dioxide and four waters. And again, this is the same equation as you would get if you combusted uh, methanol in oxygen and you did complete combustion, you would get the same reaction. But in this case, um, we're not burning it. We're, it does generate heat, but we're not burning it. We're just getting the chemical change happening without combustion. So there's a wide variety of fuel cell types. So we had um, some of them with the polymer membrane, so that's these ones in here. Um, this is an alkaline fuel cell. This has hydroxide ions. Um, this should be hydrogen ions, that should be H+, plus. that's CO3, 2 minus, that one's an O2 minus. The problem with these ones is they run at really high temperatures and they can uh, lead to issues. So let's look at the advantages of fuel cells. Uh, the fuel sources are abundant. Methanol is renewable as well, so you can have renewable resources. And hydrogen, if you're going to use a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, hydrogen is the most abundant uh, element in the universe. As long as you're providing fuel, you produce energy. So it doesn't run out, unlike a traditional battery, when your anode breaks down and is oxidized completely, then you stop producing electricity. Um, you can scale fuel cells relatively easily. So you can have small scale fuel cells that can work on small electronic devices, or you can have huge fuel cells that you could use to power a town. And the waste products are removed as the cell functions. So you know, for most of the ones we've been looking at, it's water, but for the ethanol one, it was water and carbon dioxide. As the cell is functioning, you're removing those waste products, so they don't build up anymore. Problems with fuel cells, like we talked about before, there's problems with hydrogen. So making hydrogen, we don't have really easy, cheap ways of making hydrogen without using fossil fuels. So we often strip the hydrogen off of methane um, in order to get the hydrogen gas, and that releases carbon dioxide, so that's problematic. Storing hydrogen is tricky because it's very small, so it escapes very easily. It's also flammable. 
um, and distributing hydrogen. We don't have any infrastructure for distributing hydrogen gas. Um, we can distribute petrol very easily, we can distribute coal very easily, um, but we can't distribute hydrogen very easily because we don't have a system set up for that. To keep the electrodes working nicely, you need to use very high purity of hydrogen gas passing through at the anode site. If you don't have the high purity, then you can get contaminated uh, electrodes and then they stop working. Catalysts um, on the anode side is platinum, and platinum is quite expensive, and there's a limited supply of, cat of platinum, so that leads to it being quite expensive to, in order to produce the whole fuel cell. And the technology is new. It's a very new technology. Um, improvements are still being made, and it's very, very expensive. Last thing we just need to talk about is fuel flow cells. So a flow cell is a rechargeable fuel cell, and we're going to go into the details of these in another video. Um, you have two electrolytes. You have an analyte and a catholyte, so anode and cathode. And they're separated by an ion-selective membrane. So here we can see the ion-selective membrane in the middle here. You have a tank of your analyte and your catholyte, so analyte on this side, catholyte. Um, and they provide the um, anode, analyte, or analy anode electrolyte and cathode electrolyte um, to, the fuel, uh, to the flow cell. Once you run out of your analytes and your catholytes, um, you can pump them back through in the opposite direction in the fuel cell, and then you will regenerate, um, they'll be regenerated, and then you can use them again and again. So the advantages of a flow cell are um, the amount of electricity you can generate is dependent on how big your tanks are and how much of the analyte and catholyte you have. The bigger the tanks, the more you can provide, uh, the more electricity you can provide. So this guy here is using solar power to regenerate uh, the energy from the flow cell, so he can to pump the um, analyte and catholyte in the opposite directions. This is being looked at in terms of home systems, so people will be able to use um, solar power during the day, and then at night they could use their flow battery, and then they could use the solar power the next day to regenerate the flow power, the flow cell. It's very quickly rechargeable, and there's no loss of fuel, so there's no fuel escaping in these systems. And when, op when it's operating, there's uh, no emissions. Uh, similar to solar panels, you're not producing any carbon dioxide or anything while it's running. Flow cells are possibly, uh, they're an Australian invention, and they might be used in the future to generate electricity in large amounts. Today on Flipping Science, we looked at fuel cells or flow cells. That's it for Flipping Science today. See ya.